Hey there guys, I'm Sonic Ghost and welcome back to some more Let's Play Banjo-Tooie. Last time we explored more Witchy World using both Mumbo and the transformation of the world to unlock more content for us to go ahead and interact with. And in this episode, we're going to be doing just that. We're going to be playing through all the challenges here in the Dodgem Dome. Leave our Twinklies alone! Let's see you collect 60 points worth of Twinklies in 45 seconds. Whack the bear. So this game here is a one-on-one, -on -one, and really it's more or less one of us collecting points and the other one trying to ram us off course. So our goal is just to collect a lot of these Twinklies, and that's it. The other driver here is just here as an obstacle, so this first challenge is extremely easy, because as you can see, this other guy is barely moving. His car is super slow compared to ours. So this isn't really that hard to get all the Twinklies, but you can kind of already see the pattern of this game from just how it's already set up here. There are three challenges, and each challenge there's going to be more things to deal with. So in this first challenge, we have one driver to deal with. In the next challenge, we'll have two, and then challenge three, we'll have three drivers. But there you go. That's challenge one. Hmm, not bad. You beat in game one with 75 points. Now, try my second challenge. So challenge number two is opened up for us now, so go ahead and take on challenge two. Uh, which one is the gas pedal? Let's see you collect 50 points worth of Twinklies in 45 seconds. Whack the bear. So they do add more drivers per challenge, but luckily they lower the score requirement each time. Because if we still had to get, you know, say like 60 of these Twinklies in 45 seconds and there's two dudes trying to ram us down, that would be pretty unfair. Luckily for us, Grunty actually is somewhat kind and makes the challenge easier when the difficulty of the drivers is ramping up. But these guys are both super slow, and they bump into each other, so in a way, they're kind of making us harder on themselves. So we already have enough Twinklies here to win, so we don't need to worry about getting the points now. We'll just go ahead and drive around just for the fun of it. Game number two really isn't that bad. It's game number three where you start seeing problems. Game number three, in my opinion, out of these three, is definitely the hardest. But there you go. That's challenge two down. Hey, what's this? You beat in game two with 74 points, but... There's still my third challenge. All right, we only have one more challenge to go. So let's go ahead and tackle challenge number three. You're in for a real ramming this time, pal. Let's see you collect 40 points worth of Twinklies in 45 seconds. Whack the bear. So challenge three here, as you can already see as soon as we start, is a real pain to deal with because three of these drivers against one banjo, really unfair for him. Seriously, the odds are not in our favor. But the score requirement is lower, thankfully, and it's a good thing it is lower because you're going to be pinned a lot in challenge three. My best point of advice for this game is just do circles around the ring simply because if you're anywhere near these guys and they're close to you with a wall, then you're just going to get pinned for a long time. So just constantly do a circle to throw these guys off. doesn't even matter if you can't get enough points because as you can see, we're just driving in a circle and we easily crush the score requirement. No! You beat in game 3 with 81 points! And suppose you'll be wanting some sort of prize. That's right. Hand it over, you bony hag. That's kind of weird how we're still facing the doors. I don't have any reason to go back in those challenges, but hey, at least that sets me up perfectly to use my talent trot to get out of there. So there you go. That's the dodge and dome done. As you've seen, game number three is definitely the worst one. Because, man, three on one is just simply unfair. That really does not work out for me at all. So, we activated this area here last time as Mumbo, so 
Let's go ahead and climb up these stars because we want to climb all the way up in this area since there's a jiggy at the very top. You want to be careful when you're jumping around here because one wrong move and you'll fall all the way down to the bottom. So be very careful not to fall. You'll almost die if you fall from the top of this area. This rotating platform here with the metal planet is kind of weird to deal with because it's very easy for you to slip off. So be very careful there. Use the talent trot to get up and you should be fine. I'm going to go ahead and ground pound my way down here because doing so I won't take any fall damage. This is a trick that you can do in Banjo-Kazooie that luckily carried over into Banjo-Tooie. And I'm glad because that saves us on some fall damage. Ooh, I'm starving. Get me some fries and I'll leave quietly. Wow, you got fries. Can I have some? Can I? Can I? Will you give me some food? Sure thing, kid. Have some fries. Thanks, mister. I'll go see if mom is ready to leave. Thanks for finding the little scamp for me. There's still another one to find, though. Yeah, unfortunately for you, Mrs. Boggy, we can't really do anything about that last kid. We need another move in order to carry him to you, so... You're gonna be waiting a little while. Hey, dude, get out of my way. Like, immediately coming out and just get, you know, alien in the face. That That's not good. Don't want that. Go ahead and use this warp to go back to Wumba's wigwam here. And we're mainly doing this just as a quick warp point to get to the western side. Because I want to go ahead and climb up this tower. And doing so, we'll actually see here that there is a trolley for us to go ahead and ride. So this trolley will take us from the western side over to the space side. But we want to go ahead and take this trolley because it will get us to a portion of the space side we can't reach from ground level. So I want to go ahead and activate this button. And that trolley will be pulled back over to the western side. And now we can go ahead and use it. Press B to experience the scenic splendor of the cable car ride across the space zone. So just like Grunty said, press the B button. It'll take us from one side of the map to the other. But luckily for us, this very, very long cutscene, this only plays once. So if you want to take this trolley again, this cutscene is automatically skipped. And it'll just take you from one side to the other in a matter of seconds. By taking this trolley, we'll get to the upper portion here of Space Zone. And up here, as you can see, we got ourselves a honeycomb we can go ahead and grab. So, we want to go ahead and grab this ledge, and go ahead and climb up, and grab the honeycomb. And now we want to make our way over to this section, which we activated earlier on with Mumbo. So, we want to be very careful when we're climbing this pipe, because as you can see, it has some holes in here, which is not good for us because there's electrical current going through this pipe. So we want to take things very slow. But once we're over to the other side, go ahead and press the switch to activate the jump pad. So now we don't have to climb up here anymore. We still take the trolley to the section, but we can use the jump pad to get up here instead. Activating this button, we'll go ahead and open a way from Glitter Gulch Mine into Witchy World. So that box we saved earlier on in Glitter Gulch Mine with the TNT power, now it can go ahead and fully make its way out of the world and come here. So inside the box, as you can see, is a flying saucer. Let's go ahead and interact with it. Bleep! Jump on board to ride the exciting saucer apparel. Bleep! Alright, let's go ahead and do so. Time to ride the saucer of peril. When the crosshair appears, press LT or RT to fire at targets to score points. Blue targets are worth three, green are two, and red are only one. To give you a chance, I'll give you some special eggs. Score 500 points to win first prize, or 400 points for the second prize. Leap! So you heard the flying saucer. We need to score 500 points because we want to get first place. Second place is only the first loser. We don't want to be the first loser. We want to be number one. So we're going to go ahead and score those 500. So this is just like any of the other games we've played so far in Witchy World. Go ahead and shoot these specific color targets for the more points. And we have infinite eggs, so just hold down that fire button and go to town. This saucer will basically take us around the entirety of the world. So we've we'll seen pretty much the entirety of Witchy World in this game, which is pretty cool. The only area that this saucer won't go into is the depths of the Inferno, basically where Mumbo's hut is. Simply because you can do this mini game before activating the transformation of this world and opening up that section of Witchy World in general. 
So I wanted to make sure that you can go ahead and play this mini game without having to use the transformation of this world. Since, you know, you can easily do things out of order and they want to make sure it's not going to break the game. So it makes sense to lock down that area. It's not really that big of a deal because they give you more than enough points in this game in general by just going through the normal portions of this level that are just open up the second you walk into Witchy World. But this game, honestly, really isn't that hard. In fact, I kind of feel like this game is a little bit easier on the N64 version. And that's simply because this world lacks like crazy on the N64. It's because of the dang tent in the center. For some reason, this funhouse tent in the center of Witchy World lags this game like crazy. Witchy World, you're lucky this game can run above 10 frames per second because of this tent. It is insane. And because of that, this minigame becomes slightly easier because you have more time to react to these targets. Since we're playing the Xbox 360 version, this game doesn't have any frame rate issues at all, so we're not having to worry about slowdown in this game, which in a sense kind of makes it slightly harder. But hey, I'd rather take the full frame rate than to see something very choppy because, man, trying to play this game nowadays in the N64 after you play the Xbox 360 port, it's definitely something. It's really hard to go back to the N64 version of this game, if you want to be honest. It's just next to unplayable in certain areas because of how bad it can lag. It's insane. I know the speedrunning scene still actually uses the N64 version simply because of certain glitches. There are certain glitches that will only work in the N64 version, so they'll be using that for doing a lot of the speedrun categories for this game. But there are certain things that still work in this version of the game. Heck, we even showed in one of the previous episodes, you can still technically enter Glitter Gulch Mine early in the 360 port, which was a glitch that was in the N64 version as well. So certain things got patched, certain things did not, but I'm glad I have all the things that got patched, it's the frame rate issues, because this game was really a game that chugged the N64. This game really pushed the N64 to its absolute limit. To be fair, it's a rare game, and a lot of rares games honestly pushed the N64 past its breaking point. The only game I honestly can remember playing from Rare that didn't really have a major slowdown was Banjo-Kazooie and then Diddy Kong Racing. Everything else you play from Rare and it's a slideshow. Oh yeah, there you go. We did it. We beat the game. Bleep! Nice shooting. You win two bleeping prizes. A permanent paper thing. Bleep! And this shiny gold thing. Bleep! That's all my prize is gone. But why not write again to try and beat your best score? Bleep! Yeah, I'm good here, buddy. Thanks. There's no reason to beat my score because there's nothing else I can get out of it. So why would I beat my score? It's a good score. I like it. But that's everything we can do here in the space side. So there's one more thing we can go ahead and do in Witchy World. And that's to enter this big old tent. Last time we tried to enter here, we, we were told from Conga that we needed four tickets to go ahead and actually enter the tent for real. We have those four tickets, so let's go ahead and enter. Huh. I see you have enough tickets now. We sure do, monkey boy. That's my shift over then. Enjoy the show. Come on, Manjo. Let's go grab a seat. What do you think our seat will be? I can't see any seats. Perhaps we're supposed to sit on this big lump on the floor over here. Doesn't look very comfy. Oh dear, not more intruders. Well, I'll show you who's boss. See how big and strong Mr. Patch is. Ah, not all that big, really. That Klungo freak near the start was probably bigger than you. Oh yeah, well, how about this then? Oh. I suppose you think you're clever, don't you? Well, one doesn't like to blow one's own trumpet. Oh. 
I sense a battle coming on. If you insist. So this here is Mr. Pash, the boss here of Witchy World. What we need to go ahead and do is enter our first person aiming, shoot him with a grenade egg, and blow up one of his patches. A little hard to aim here as you can see, but let's just go ahead and aim for one of the top ones, and there you go. Oh, you found a weak spot. Looks like I might need some help here. You have to beat me from the air now. So after we do one thing of damage here to Mr. Patch, he's gonna summon these fists to come out of the ground, so we need to just basically fly for the rest of this battle. We can't be on the ground at all, because if we're down there on the ground, we will get hurt. So you can technically still fight Mr. Patch on the ground, but it's not recommended because it's just, it's a little too risky and you have to be very quick with your shots. But you need the move here that you learn in Witchy World to aim in first person while flying. Without this move, you won't even be allowed to enter this tent, even if you have all four tickets. So, you still need that move, and as you can see, it's pretty much hard to fight this guy. Because, again, you can technically fight him on the ground, but it's going to be way harder, so it's not recommended. We're pretty much out of eggs, so I'm going to go ahead and grab me some more grenade eggs over here. And then just enter the air once again. Luckily, they give you more than enough eggs in this fight, so even when you run low, just go ahead and land on the ground real quick. Go over to one of the flight pads and grab yourself an extra supply of eggs. Then when I actually turn off my first person, I'm just trying to dodge these dang beach balls you throw in my way. And now I want to go ahead and zoom in here a bit because we can go ahead and use our goggle ability we learned very early on from one of Bottle's kids and make this fight so much easier. But the goggles is much easier to aim from a distance. So it's highly recommended to have that move at this point in the game because it just makes a huge difference in certain boss fights. Luckily for us, if we just rub against Mr. Patch here, he won't hurt us directly. His beach balls are mainly the only way he can hurt us. Beach balls and those fists he summons from the ground are really it. Because just running face first into Mr. Patch doesn't do anything since he's made of rubber. So that's good for us. Now, unfortunately for me, my final two hits here are right on his nose. And this nose is really awkward to hit. So I'm going to have to get in front of him here and just do a U-turn. And just hope I can go ahead and hit his nose. Wow, I actually got both of those with one shot. That's impressive. But that's it. That's the boss fight. Uh-oh. Looks like trouble. That ending of the fight really turned from really bad to really good in just a split second. I've never destroyed two patches at once on Mr. Patch like that. That is insane luck. I mean, as you now seen, it's technically possible to do that. It's not easy, but apparently it's possible. But that's the boss of World 3 down, and now with him taken care of, that's pretty much everything we can do here in Witchy World. Because our final thing that we have to do in this world, unfortunately, is going to have to wait a bit. Because, uh, Miss Boggy, I'm sorry to say, but one of your kids is very fat, and I can't lift him on my own. I need a special ability I'll learn later to go ahead and do so. So, if we check our totals now, we'll go ahead and see that we have ourselves 9 out of the 10 Jiggies, but everything else collected. So, the last Jiggy here is just getting that final kid for Miss Boggy, and we'll be doing that later on once we have a move from a later world. But, that's it. And we already know about this food thing, Grunty, because you told us this when we brought the train in. We went down to the train station and went through the spiel. Why are we getting this again? That's weird. But yeah, that's it. That's all we can do in Witchy World. So now with that done, let's go ahead and enter in our warp point here and go back to the plateau. Because before we end this episode... I think we'll go ahead and turn in some of those honeycombs we have, because now we have enough honeycombs to get us an extra life. So, let's go ahead and add one more life bar to our health in general, shall we? Let's go ahead and pay Miss Honeybee a visit. I'm Honeybee. I'll trade your extra energy units in return for empty honeycombs. You have enough honeycombs for one extra energy unit. 
Do you want to trade? Sure thing. Sure, honey. Toss your honeycombs over here then, big bear. Here's your extra energy. There you go. We got one more unit of health, and we're good to go. Now, we need seven more of those honeycombs to get another thing of health, so it's going to be a little bit before we can actually visit this honeybee again, but it's good to know that for now because we have enough energy and we have an idea what to do for next time. But, as you can see here, we need to go ahead and use our split-up ability to traverse further here in the Owl Hags. So, now that we know that ability from Witchy World, we're going to go ahead and do so in the next episode. Next time on Let's Play Banjo-Tooie, we'll be using our split-up pads here and exploring more of the Isle of Hags. I'll see you guys next time.